Hello everyone, so it's been quite a while since I got to show my face or even talk on camera but uh, there's been quite some changes and as I recently revived my channel I decided it was time to come back and for the new subscribers I just want to thank them very much In this episode I am going to walk you through the process it took me to install the new belt also some dust collection and uh, refurbishing an old upper guide and installing a new lower guide. This has been challenging but also fun and um, I feel like it was a learning experience and I hope that you can get something from this video as you watch it. I actually had to use a gear puller in order to pull the bottom wheel off in order to install the new belt and to put it back in I actually had to use a sledgehammer that I padded with some tape and some cardboard that way I didn't damage anything it took me about a half a day to figure that out then after I mounted the motor with the help of a plastic crate I adjusted again the height of the motor that way it uh, tightened the belt to the wheel pulley and also to the pulley of the motor so when I actually when pulled, I pulled uh, the wheel, wheel bottom wheel down with, with the, the gear, gear puller, puller I actually damaged the inner thread of the shaft that was holding it it damaged it for the first one or two threads so I knew I was in such big trouble but one thing I did have to do is go ahead and get a set of uh, 10 millimeter threaded taps which was the size of the inside thread and I went ahead and did that in the sequence of um, using the tapered one first and then I just went ahead and used the bottoming one and went over all of the threads all the way to the end As soon as you start to feel the tap engaging, you would want to back it off after one or two revolutions, just a bit so you can break off the chips. That way you don't risk damaging the inner thread. I went ahead and passed to the bottoming tap and uh, again using the same sequence. I used the vice grip because I just didn't have a uh, hex wrench that was a uh, 10 millimeter size so this uh, did the job even though it kind of ruined a little bit of the outside of the screw but that didn't really matter that much what it did matter is that it actually screwed and held everything in place even though I do have to say that the tolerances uh, that, that those bearings are made of in junction with the shaft were, were very minimal. I used a ruler in order to kind of um, gauge where I would have to, to mount my lower guide. I just uh, used some um, dry pine that I had and I created these uh, blocks to house uh, the lower guide.
And then I just use some uh, wood glue and um, spread it evenly and attach the blocks with some brad nails and some uh, wood screws that are long enough. There's a reason to go ahead and use this little block thing for chamfering. I will find it. It's after two, th maybe three years since I've had it, I still love it. This hole had to be a little bit more precise, so I went ahead and uh, bored it into the, into the right side of the block. That way it was... Uh, area where I could actually insert the bolt to hold the lower guide assembly. Of course, threading taps in wood is way easier, way more tolerant than it is in uh, in any type of metal, so maybe I could have used the drill to tap that, but I went ahead and did it by hand. I had to enlarge a washer because I didn't have one that had the right 10 millimeter inside diameter, so I just went ahead and used the drill to do that. you can see me just testing out everything to see the mobility and how easy it is to adjust and I was quite pleased with it. This is the way the block fits inside, leaving clearance for the shaft that travels back and forth. And then I went ahead and marked the holes to be bored inside the cast iron frame. If you haven't done this before, like I haven't actually done much, uh, what I, my sequence here was to use a uh, scratch owl, or kind of like a center punch, I guess, and then use a smaller diameter drill bit, and then use uh, the final diameter, which was uh, 10 millimeters. I use a clamp to hold the block in place and uh, I marked the holes then went ahead and bored the aligning holes in the block of wood. Then again I uh, went ahead and tapped the threads inside.
Now with that chapter done, I went ahead and I draw my attention to the wooden insert on top of the table. This is quite old and uh, I think it was definitely time for a new one. It's basically the shape of a uh, shallow pyramid or pyramid with a top uh, cut off. I just took the angle of that and made um, took the measurements and then went ahead to the table saw and cut the block. I used some solid wood which in my case was a uh, solid beech. I went ahead and uh, put the insert inside the cast iron table and of course uh, I'm gonna have to mark to see how much I actually had to take off and because this was quite a lot I uh, first used my uh, dozuki saw to take out the gross of the material Then I went ahead and finished everything flat with a small hand plane. To cut the slot in I just uh, used a uh, combination square, marked the lines, left enough room uh, to accommodate different size blades. And uh, I went ahead and made those cuts on the table saw, clamped to my uh, cross cut table. Even though the insert wasn't quite ready yet, I decided to focus my attention on the upper guide assembly. I basically took everything apart, cleaned it up, and I started to strip the paint that was still left on.
then use some masking tape and went outside and uh, used some rust protective paint. It was white, about the same white that uh, the lower guys were. There were some parts that I forgot to mask, and it just was easier to went ahead, go ahead and um, sand off. is fitted like a glove. One cool thing about this bandsaw is that the doors actually come off, so it's quite easy, even if you're in a tight space. To finish the insert, I went ahead and counted some four holes. After that, I changed a bit and drilled all the way through. Then I actually used some cut wood screws that were the same length in order to use as leveling feet. Resawing six inches of oak was nothing. And making veneer with what's considered to be a blade for higher resaws came out really nice.
Even though in the last episode I modified, or I should say I remade the guard, I decided that it was a little bit too wide. Basically make it the same width as the aluminum part of the guard. This time I'm actually using a uh, scroll or hand scroll saw. For those of you that are interested, you could watch the old episode and I will go a little bit more in detail on some specific things that you should take into account when bending acrylic. Watching Rob Cussman as he explained the dust collection on his band saws, I was inspired and I tried to replicate that as best as I remembered it. Basically he uses a PVC pipe where the saw blade actually goes through it. So that creates a uh, suction effect which helps a lot with the dust collection. As you will see later, at least on top of the table, there's very little dust. By not going all the way through, I had to clear a little bit more wood in order to make sure that the door could close and also the guide assembly would move freely. To make the wooden part a little bit more rigid I installed this little block of poplar 90 degree to the pipe, that way um, the pipe sits uh, solidly on the block. First I made the cuts straight with my Dozuki saw and then I went ahead with the coping saw, met them together in order to create the channel. Cap it off, I just used that circle that I've cut previously and uh, I tape everything with some electrical tape. As before, to drill in cast iron, I first used a smaller bit and then the bit of the size that I wanted the bolt to go in. And 
But then I use some thumb screws, and that way, if I have to take this whole assembly off, it will be a matter of seconds. Conveniently, in a small shop, my dust collection is right there, so it was easy to connect it. As you can see, yes, initially there is dust that just flew a little bit when I started to cut. But it's very minimal, and I'm cutting to 6 inch oak. This was the dust that was on the table, so overall uh, not perfect. This was a good improvement, I think. Everyone, thanks for watching again. And um, next, in two weeks actually from now, I'm going to post um, what I'm working on as we speak, which is a set of uh, decorative, I think that's what they're called. It's a decorative kind of arc that will go on top of a uh, entryway in the kitchen so um, stay tuned in two weeks I'm going to post that uh, episode till then uh, have fun stay safe and uh, have a good time in the shop see you soon